The Ouija board has become quite a popular item used to communicate with the other side. And whether you believe the Ouija board is just a game and that the movements come from muscle twitches, or it is really a board that can communicate with spirits, there are rules when using it. Of course, there are the basic and simple rules that are on the box it comes with, but there are a lot more than that. Anytime you attempt to communicate with the other side, you're running the risk of a door being opened, and you never know who or what is coming through. Although it's probably best that you don't mess with something like this, I know many of you will. So you might as well know all the rules, regardless of if it's just a game or not. So here are the rules to using a Ouija board. But before we get started, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel followed by the bell notification so you never miss an upload. Rule number one, when contacting a spirit, be as specific as possible and try to communicate with a specific person. When you try to make general contact, you risk anything being able to respond. Rule number two, when communicating with a spirit, always be respectful. You never know who or what you're talking to and don't want to disrespect a spirit ever. Besides, just put yourself in their shoes. If somebody was trying to communicate with you, would you really want to be disrespected? Rule number three, don't ever believe anything a spirit tells you. Spirits like to lie, especially evil ones, and will use these lies to manipulate, control, scare you, and even possibly possess you. Rule number four, you never want to play a Ouija board alone because one, most people aren't strong enough to actually make contact. But also, whether you think it's a game or not, it taps into your subconscious and that can be dangerous by itself. And lastly, if you happen to make contact with an evil spirit, it's just you two, and you're in trouble. Number five, never, ever, ever leave the planchette on the board when you're done. You allow the spirits to take control, and you have some serious issues at hand. Rule number six, always have a leader and someone to take notes. The leader is the one that leads and keeps order. They ask the questions and keep everything on track. You don't want a bunch of people just blurting out a hundred questions and confusing spirits and potentially opening more doors. The note taker is there to document and keep track of everything being relayed and everything you see and hear. Rule number seven, choose your locations wisely. Never play in a cemetery or your own home. When playing in a cemetery, you're in a location with countless of spirits and giving them all a voice. Spirits, they want to be heard, and they will do whatever it takes in order for that to happen. Now, when it comes to your own home, you are essentially opening a door to another world in your home, and you run the risk of your house being permanently haunted. Not to mention, if you don't close the game properly, you're opening yourself and your home to all kinds of terrible things. Rule number eight, avoid playing the Ouija board if you feel ill or weak. You open yourself to demonic possession and evil spirits like to go after those that are the weakest in the group and like to possess those that can't fight back. Rule number nine, never let the spirits count down. This is almost always a sign that something terrible is about to happen. And if a spirit does begin to count down, end the game immediately. Rule number 10, don't ask about God. Evil spirits will lash out and can become extremely violent. Also, just as many people have different beliefs, so do spirits, and you can make things kind of awkward. Again, you want to be respectful. Rule number 11, never ever ask when you're going to die because you're not going to like the answer. You also run the risk of it being immediate and besides, do you really want to know and constantly looking over your shoulder or anxiously and nervously waiting for that time? Rule number 12, always place a silver item on the board. It helps to repel evil spirits and helps keep you safe. Rule number 13, always make sure that you close your board properly. Otherwise, the spirit will continue to haunt you even after you're finished. 
Rule number 14. When using a Ouija board, it works best when playing in a dim or candlelit room. Using a board is a form of seance, so if you prepare your session in the same way, it'll greatly improve your odds and chances of reaching someone or something. Rule number 15. Never burn your board. Usually, it won't burn, but besides that, you will have spirits latch onto you and continue to haunt you long after the board is gone. Rule number 16. The last rule on this list is always make sure you say goodbye. This breaks the connection and allows you to properly leave the session safely. It may take a few times, so again, make sure that you end and close your session properly. Otherwise you and everyone you're with will be in some serious trouble. So there you have it. There are the rules to using a Ouija board. Leave a comment and let me know if you know any rules that I may have missed. Also, let me know if you've ever used a Ouija board, and if so, what happened? If you have a video idea, story, or a video for me to share on this channel, check out the description down below. Follow me on these social medias, Instagram, TikTok, and my Facebook group, where we share stories with each other. And lastly, if you haven't already, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel followed by the bell notification so you never miss an upload.